The United Nations is calling the famine in the Horn of Africa the worst humanitarian disaster in the world. We look at the urgency of the situation next. I'm Lorna Duick and you're watching Context, the show that looks at life beyond the headlines. It's East Africa's worst drought in 60 years, and it's killed tens of thousands of people in the last few months. In July, the UN officially declared a famine in two regions of Somalia, and it has since reached a total of six areas. Now more than 13 million people need urgent humanitarian aid. 750,000 Somalis risk dying of starvation. Extreme drought isn't the only cause of the famine. Skyrocketing food costs and violent political instability also play a role. Now Somalis are fleeing their homes to search for food and seeking help in overcrowded refugee camps in Kenya. How did the situation in East Africa get so bad? And can we prevent the famine from getting worse? Let's put it in context. Our first guest is an expert on Somali affairs. Ahmed Hussein is the president of the Canadian Somali Congress, and he's here to help us understand the causes of the famine and the political situation in Somalia. Ahmed, you have said this should have been completely avoidable. Mm -hmm. Why? Why were these causes avoidable? Because after the uh, 1984 Ethiopian famine, there was the UN and the international community put together an early warning system to prevent future famines. And uh, that system was supposed to uh, be triggered by early warning signs, uh, early signs of, of famine-like conditions. And that would uh, then supposedly enable the international community to respond quickly to avert uh, another famine. What went wrong? Uh, the, the system didn't uh, go wrong. The system worked. Uh, in fact, um, the whole, most of uh, uh, the beginning of this year, from January uh, earlier than that, there were consistent um, warning signs from those who were uh, in charge of this early famine warning system. And they said, uh, we need uh, to respond to this now, and we need to respond to this quickly. But those calls were unheeded. And uh, unfortunately, uh, people started to take this seriously uh, too late. Too late yeah. So whose job was it to respond to those early warnings? Well, uh, the, the UN. Uh, was the main uh, 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 entity that was supposed to respond to this. However, they rely on don uh, donor contributions to this uh, anti-famine uh, fund, and that fund was severely underfunded. Okay, here's one reason mm -hmm. why I hesitated to give to that fund at okay. first. Yes. Because you have Al-Shabaab in there mm -hmm. saying the aid coming from you as a Christian organization is yes. infidel aid. Mm -hmm. Don't take it. Mm -hmm. It couldn't get through. What's being done to stop Al-Shabaab from having that kind of religious intolerance on those? Well, that's a political question. Uh, Al-Shabaab is uh, unquestionably uh, problematic in terms of the famine. They have not only denied that there was a famine, they've prevented people innocent civilians in their control to leave their territories and try to get aid. Uh, having said that, there are things that could have been done. Uh, for example, there, there was uh, many times in the world people have intervened, uh, humanitarian intervention has happened to rescue people from groups like Al-Shabaab. If the international community had no stomach for this, then the African Union was willing to do this. But they needed resources, and, and those resources. And we're going into other there. countries, but this country sure. we don't seem to have stopped. I have been appalled mm -hmm. that um, in Mogadishu Radio you have Al Shabaab saying we will give bombs and rifles to mm -hmm. children for reciting the Quran. Mm -hmm. As two faith groups, you're Muslim, I'm Christian. Yes. What can we do to hold our potential that's in both of our faith groups to heal this? Sure, I know Muslims are appalled yes. when they see Al Shabaab hijacking their faith like that. Absolutely, yeah. What can be done? Well, I think at the end of the day, the the Somalis have to uh, solve their own problem, but we can help them. And if you have, it's not an accident that there's been a drought in the whole region, but Somalia is the only country that has famine. So what has turned 
the, the drought in Somalia into a famine, but hasn't turned the drought in the other countries into a famine. It's, it comes down to governance. Uh, Somalis are trying to establish viable government institutions, uh, such as those in the north and in the east, that can provide for their people, prevent famine, and put in place anti-famine programs. The Somalis are trying to do that. The best way to do, to prevent famine, to deal with the famine right now, and to defeat al-Shabaab, is to help those reformers in Somalia to establish viable institutions that will protect the dignity and human rights of Somalis, but also prevent future famines. And can we find those reformers? Yes. Al-Shabaab is still recruiting from Canada, correct? Well, uh, Al-Shabaab has had a record of recruitment in Canada, that's, that's true. However, uh, the sanctions that uh, the national community has put against them, as well as the banning by Canada of Al-Shabaab and their assets, has severely limited their ability to do so. Uh, having said that, Al-Shabaab is now on the retreating end. They've withdrawn from Mogadishu because of, a, because of an offensive that was carried out by the African Union and the Somali government. So there are steps that are being taken to deal with these kinds of issues, and, and, and they need international community to help. And how do we help the reformers? You help them by, a lot of times it's not even money. You just need technical assistance. Mm -hmm. For example, they're putting together an anti-corruption commission and a strong judiciary, for example, to enable Somalis to uh, have viable national institutions. Canada can help with that. Canada has amazing expertise in terms of setting up a judiciary and, uh, and, and commissions and bodies that really work well. Okay, I'm going to ask you to step over to our studio audience in a moment, sure. and we're going to talk about remittances there, okay. because I'm amazed yes. at how much is coming from the Somali community in North America back yeah. to Somalia. We're going to ask our studio audience how they feel about that, and you, our audience at home. Do developed countries have a responsibility to support developing countries? Would you say yes? Are you unsure? Or would you say no? You can send us your answers via Facebook, Twitter, and email. Or you can phone us with your response. But here in the studio, our audience is doing a live vote, and we'll have those results after the break. When we return, we'll talk to World Vision Canada about the urgent need for aid in East Africa. That's next on Context.